Hey, Warcraft Replays, this is Joseki bringing you an audio commentary on the Human vs. Undead matchup on Echo Isles. Uh, before I get talking too much longer, get the replay loaded up and paused at the two minute mark, and I'm going to talk at you for a bit. Okay, so uh, this audio is going to be between Nook and Yane from, I believe, the uh, Season 5 uh, Regional Finals for America. And one of the. Uh, this is a pretty much an undead strategy that's being used uh, more and more often. It's been played against me a few times in ladder. I saw Fav as well as Sweet do variations of it. This is a Yane's variation, which is going to be involving an undead fast expansion and a human paladin user. Uh, two relatively new things that are sort of on the scene. The human paladin used to be used back in like 1.4, even before that, and like it's been used throughout uh, cookie cutter style pro games. Recently picking up a lot more popularity, I think, due to uh, THOOO, who has basically been, who basically started using it again, and now Sky, Todd, everyone uses it. It's really good on certain maps such as Echo Isles, Terna Stand, and. Uh, this play and the player you're going to be watching today, Nilknarf, <coughs> does a great job of abusing the paladin as best he can. Uh, mostly, I think the primary focus of this game is that uh, the undead will be going panda and he will be doing a fast expansion. And a lot of this game is how to react to a fast expansion, how to harass fast expansions, how to keep the undead uh, as controlled as possible. It is very difficult to stop an undead from fast expanding, but it can be done. While Nook Nick does not stop the fast expansion from happening, he definitely makes Yane pay for it on many levels. Um, if you'll, I hope you guys are getting almost at the two minute mark here. Uh, another, I think, some points about Echo Isles, especially when you're going to be going Paladin, are just ex how exceptionally easy it is to creep level 3. Uh, one of the extremely versatile points of using uh, the, pa the uh, pal Paladin versus Undead, as soon as you get level 3, if you just whack an Acolyte once and light it, it instantly dies. And in combination with uh, Holy Sh or Divine Shield, uh, it's extremely, extremely, extremely easy to kill mass amounts of acolytes, and that's just use staff, staff teleportation to get out of there, uh, which is one of the main versatilities of the paladin. Also, he's pretty effective for creeping. Um, what he lacks in uh, a creeping tank, if you will, which would be usually uh, filled in by uh, the water elemental of the archmage. You will often see uh, holy light. So, you, like, if your militia is getting focused, it's almost dead. You can just holy light it, and it's fine. So that sort of it sort of replaces uh, the use of the water elemental. Although it isn't as effective versus ghouls, that's one of the reasons why people have been going panda on this map, anticipating the paladin of the human player. But regardless, uh, everyone's at the two minute mark. I'm going to be unpausing in five, four, three, two, one. Unpause. Okay. The Paladin was summoned by Nilk. Panda is going to be gotten by... <clears throat> by Yane. Uh, you'll notice the first thing Nilk's doing is he's going to run up to his top camp here with three militia and his Paladin. He's going to send his uh, Paladin and two foots to attack the warrior and then the three p m militia to attack the troll. Uh, as you see, he just used Holy Light on his footman to try and heal weak footmen. That's very important. Simply because... Uh, you know, you don't want to be losing foots or militia and such, and without the water elemental tank it's a bit more difficult, but you can just use holy light. Uh, Todd putting, or uh, hey, Todd, Nilk putting a tower in his base just to, uh, you know, arcane tower versus skeletons is very valuable. If Yane is going to be massing ghouls, like, well, he's not, he did not sell his town portal. If oftentimes when the player sells their town portal, it means they're putting up a second crypt in their main base to mass ghouls and attack you, which is one of those cases where you're going to need a tower. Uh, one of the main things, main reasons to get that tower is just so you can defend against uh, the panda and ghouls, just like running in your base, killing as many peasants as they possibly can, and then TPing out, which is something uh, that's extremely, extremely annoying to fight. Uh, here Yane harassing with, attempting to harass with his panda. Uh, I. Personally, I think this is a, a dumb choice by Yane. I mean, I could be totally wrong. But I just think that when you're going to be going a hero like Panda, who's rather weak at Tier 1, uh, it would probably be a better choice overall just to try and use him to creep, get his level 3, and then push with mass ghouls. Uh, Note gets an excellent surround here on the Panda. Panda forces TP out. And essentially what Note's going to do right now is take massive advantage of that and just go and make his fast expansion. When you're going Paladin, you're always going to be doing a fast expansion. Maybe there's some rare cases, perhaps in Twisted Meadows, where if you were to go Paladin, which is not a great Paladin map regardless, you would do a fast expansion. Uh, Paladin, as soon as he hits 
level 3 is a lot more important, but right now the Paladin's only at level 2. Uh, Nilk is very intelligent in his train of thought here. Okay, so he just forced the Panda to TP out, right? Panda's TP'd out, and he's level 1, and he's level 2. Obviously, the first thing Yane's going to do is go creep. He's not going to come back and try and harass him some more. That would be relatively ineffective. So he's able to leave his expo go up and continue creeping his merc camp. When you're going Paladin, I think it's also important to be getting mercs, just because they do help a lot in filling that gap that water elementals uh, usually fill and being able to stop stop ghoul harasses and stop massive ghoul attacks, which are, can be quite the pain when you're using a Paladin, which I think is one of the main disadvantages of using him. Uh, another thing, if you're going to be expecting a Garg harass, or if they're going ghouls or massing ghouls, or just they have ghouls, oftentimes I'd say put up two towers before your actual um, before your actual tech. Put two towers up at each base, two guards at each base, and that's a pretty safe bet as far as keeping your um, keeping your ex expo alive and up and running and essentially unharassed. One of the reasons Gargs work so effectively is simply because they can take down building towers very quickly and then it's it's hard to fight uh, Gargs when you have a, just a paladin and foots. Actually, it's essentially impossible unless you have infinite mana. But let's not get into that. Um, basically, some standard harassment by Yane uh, using Skelth, Rod of Necromancy to attack the peasants of Nilknarf. Chases them away, yeah, no big deal. Uh, I think that this point where Nilk is like, man, some shit's gotta be going down. And he's gonna run over here, and as you can see, Yane has already begun his expo. And this is one of those points where Nilk can't really do anything to stop the expo. Like, while the expo is is very... is, is pretty much up, and he has two towers building, which are almost done, it's gonna be very difficult for, uh, at this point for Nilk to be doing any sort of harassment. Generally speaking, if the Undead player is going to be doing something like this, there's a few things that are very important to keep in mind. One, it's going to be ghouls versus whatever units you have for a good while. If they're going to be going having ghouls for a long time, that mean, that definitely means something. Okay, so you can mass foots with defend and mercs. And once you have lots of, once you have a shitload of mercs, yeah, you know, a shitload of mercs plus lots of defended foots, it's going to be a rough time for ghouls. And especially if they're defended, the towers really aren't going to be able to have any sort of DPS against the uh, footmen themselves. So here's uh, Nilk just doing some harassment and trying to push any sort of unit advantage he can get right now and try and force the undead player into a very bad position and really make him pay for this expansion that he's been putting up. Uh, Yane's still building acolytes at his main, hasn't quite sent them down yet. He probably doesn't want them to get jacked on the way. Which is an important thing, trying to be aware of where your units are rallied to is always something that's important. Um, so, right now, more or less, if you notice, once a ghoul's down to about half HP, a level 3 light kills it. And without coil, it is very difficult for Yane to be able to keep any of his ghouls alive in any sort of real way. Uh, it begins the construction of a necropolis. All undeads will essentially get a necropolis at their expo so they can TP to it. Undead Expo, the one thing to realize about Undead Expos is they're very uh, costly. If you notice, he had to build three ziggurats, upgrade three of them to towers, another shop, and a necropolis. I'm not even going to do the math, but that's a shitload of money that he's wasting, or not wasting, uh, investing, if you will, on getting this expansion up and running. If the expansion were to fail, he would lose the game. Like, obviously the expansion didn't fail, it is up and running to an extent. Uh, aside from the fact that Nilknarf will be pushing it rather soon. You can safely say that um, the Undead Expo is up and running, and with that being said, he put a lot of money into this, so he has to harvest a lot of money from it from this gold mine before he's actually making his money worth. And also you have to notice that his tech is rather late. Nilk their tech speeds are about equal, and this is one of the things about the matchup. Uh, Nilknarf can essentially go tanks now, pretty freely. There isn't too much Yane's going to be able to do about Nilknarf going tanks, which is essentially what he's just going to be doing this game, is tank Griffin. But, again, that's a bit later. Uh, the Paladin is level 4 now, has a very long, I believe 30 second long Divine Shield, or 45 seconds, one of the two. Uh, extremely long Divine Shield lasts basically forever. Uh, he did research to defend on his foots, as you're seeing right now. They're essentially invincible to the towers of Yane. Yane not going to be able to do too much damage to any of those defended footmen, simply because, yeah, it's they're insanely buff.